Hello. Today we're going to talk about two closely related experiments. We'll start with the homonuclear spin decoupled experiment, and then we'll talk about COSY. And both of these are helpful when you're trying to distinguish systems that have complex coupling or coupling that maybe overlaps with each other. My first couple examples are going to be very clean though, where you don't see that overlapping. So here we have a proton NMR spectrum and we have an ethyl peak. We have a quartet and a triplet and we want to know maybe if these two are actually an ethyl. Maybe this is a quartet is coupling to a different methyl group. So what we can do is irradiate the peak here. So if you irradiate the methyl, um, this is getting extra radio frequency at the right frequency and those uh, nuclei of uh, the hydrogens are flipping too quickly and the coupling then to this peak disappears. So this becomes a singlet because it is not affected by these magnets that are flipping up and down too rapidly. So this immediately tells me that this was coupled to that peak. So for example, you can see this in a system with some complex coupling. We have a rigid system and this is a doublet. These two are clearly doublet of doublets, but we wanna know is this peak at 8.5 coupled into these two? And when you irradiate that peak at 8.5, which is the aldehydic proton, you see it goes from a doublet. It's hard to tell that it's a doublet of doublets because the coupling is so small, but you see it disappear um, or collapse these both down to doublets. So these were both coupled in to this through complex, through the coupling. So that confirms that you did, that those were all coupled. So related spectrum, if you look at this, you could do this to um, multiple peaks through the spectrum. You would probably go through and irradiate this and make sure it couples to both of those, irradiate this and make sure it's coupled to both of those. When it can get tedious, you have to run several spectra. COSY is really a um, homonuclear decoupling, so it's in the same nuclei. We're looking, we're irradiating a proton and observing protons but we're doing a decoupling pulse over the entire frequency range and, and getting the correlations in one experiment. So what happens is you get a diagonal, you use a ruler hopefully, and these are the self-correlations. So this is, it's correlating to itself and we don't really care about those. That's really just your proton spectrum. So I have three peaks, and if you go across, it's just couple, it's itself. But what we want are these red and blue peaks because those tell us who's actually coupled to each other. So I can march through and say this peak at, if we go through the proton NMR here, um, 0.9, that's this one, is coupled to a peak at 1.5. And because you can connect them. And this peak at 1.5 is connected over to the peak at 2.6. So I can walk myself through that chain and I know that this is bonded to this and this is probably bonded to that because this is giving me the three bond coupling. So the red dot here, 2.6 is the carbon next to the nitrogen and it's coupled over to a peak at 1.5, probably CH2, which then on this blue dot here is coupled to the methyl. So it walks you right down that chain. Uh, this will be useful then to be able to distinguish isomers because it gives you spin groups. So this is, if we think of the diagonal again, we can ignore everything on the diagonal, those peaks, because those are just your proton NMR speed peaks. And you have the proton on both axes. So you're looking to see who's connected to each other. And I've got an aromatic ring, so we see a bunch of coupling across that ring. So these are the protons on the ring connected to each other. And you see some long range coupling more than the two, three bond because it's the aromatic system. 
but we also have this double bond it's coupling into. So this is the aromatic ring. We've got a double bond and we have um, our aldehydic proton. So what this can tell us is quickly, I can look at this and say, here's my aldehyde and here's my aldehyde. I would, not ex I would expect this aldehyde to be coupled to the ring possibly, but I would not expect this one to couple over to anything else. So I would not expect that to. But I would definitely, as we saw in the amino acrylin, expect this to be coupled to these two hydrogens. And so if you look, here's my aldehyde and it is coupled into that peak. I'm not seeing this one. Sometimes you have to go to a different slice because this is actually a three dimensional um, spectrum. But it's pretty clear that I have a strong coupling to one of these double bonds. And so this is the product that you have in here. The other peak here is a methyl of the methoxy and it's not coupled to anything, but we have the coupling of the aromatic allyl um, with the conjugated system. So I mentioned that this is important when I have overlapping peaks. So I wanna go through this spectrum more carefully because I have the possibility of either three octanone or four, one, two, three, yeah, octanone. So we're going to go through at 2.4. Um, we're going to walk down the um, from either direction. But let's start here. If this is a methyl and this is a methyl, then those are integrating to three. But then that is higher. So that looks like four. And this is about half of that. So this is two. And then this is clearly four. So we, I always double check and this is six and four is 10 and that's 16 to, and so this would be two, four, six, eight, 10, 14 plus the two on the end. So the integration matches my structure. So that's good. But I clearly have some CH2s in both of these places that are sitting on top of each other. I have some methyls but I can't really with this, so I have, uh, tell what's going on because this looks like a multiplet. This is some sort of multiplet, uh, multiplet, and then these are both triplets. So this gets very messy once you get a little bit longer chain trying to figure out who's bonded to who. And this is when the cozy becomes very convenient. So if you look at the 2.43, you can see it looks like it's proton A. Um, there should be a B here because really, you can see that there are two different peaks in here. And they show up, if you have a ruler, you can see the center of this one is showing up much further downfield than the center of this one. So now I can see who's connected to whom. So for example, uh, well, we should go through it carefully. A has a cross peak with C. So A sees C. And it doesn't see anybody else. Um, B, that's this one, B has a cross peak with F. Okay, C has a cross peak with A. So that's good, that confirms that. But it also sees this one side of this, which is E. And then D, let's go over here to D. D is coupling into G and D and E. Right, is that right? No, well, it's, of course it's coupling into D. So D sees E and G. And E can see E, I should draw my, and D and C, C and D. F, at this point it should be confirming what I had before. F is seeing itself, that's its um, self-correlation and it's seeing B. 
and G saves itself and it's clearly seeing D. And that's good. So now, if I look at this, my peaks at 2.43 are probably the two peaks on the sides of the carbonyl because they're pulled the furthest down. So if A and B are next to the carbonyl, and I put A on one side and B on the other side, and A is connected to C, okay, and C is connected to A and E. So I'm kind of done there. Um, well, let's see here. B is connected to F, and then F connects to B, and that looks like it's kind of done, but hang on, E, C, C, and C, C, C. So over here, I must have E, and then E, C's, C and D, so this is D, and D, C's, E and G, D, C's, E and G, and G, C's, D. So let's see, I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I've accounted for everybody. F and B see only each other. Everybody else, you can walk right down that chain and that confirms that this is my structure. And this is B and F and everything else, A, C, E, D, and G are coupled into each other with cozy and I put the whole structure together with cozy and knowing that 2.4 would be next to a carbonyl. So this can be very powerful for putting together a whole spin system. Um, so I encourage you to go track to try some practice problems. There are cozy practice problems in the online textbook and there are a number on some other websites linked in through Canvas, UCLA, for example. So this is a very powerful tool for helping you connect structures.